Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church on this beautiful May Sunday. Uh, and a very special day, a lot of red here today, which means Pentecost, right? And we have uh, all of our flames, at least up here, we're doing our art project this morning. Um, but we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 We begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for through the water of baptism you make us new leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls. <coughs> Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Let us pray. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones, and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth, and give us language to proclaim your gospel through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning. Got to get my voice out there. Sorry. Uh, the first reading today is from Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. The Lord led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. <clears throat> the Lord said to me, mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh God, you know. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you <clears throat> and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then the Lord said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal. 
and say to the bread, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that, I may, that they may live. I prophesied as the Lord commanded me, and the breath came into them. And they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then the Lord said to me, Mortal, these bones are, whole, are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live. And I will place you in your, on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. second reading is from Acts <clears throat> chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under, under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and, and astonished, they asked, are not all, all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, 
uh, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? <clears throat> but others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be with you from God, our creator, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Pray with me, please. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of all of our hearts 
Christ. May they be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It feels good to take a nice deep breath, doesn't it? It feels good to breathe. And I'm being a little selfish here because I don't have my mask on, right? But I know some of us who have taken maybe yoga classes and the importance of breathing in yoga, those of us who have played sports and oftentimes been told by a coach or a parent, take a deep breath, right? Those of us who have taken a test in school and don't really know what's going on, but pause a little bit, take a deep breath and try to concentrate. Or those of us working on a long, hard project that need to just get up and go for a walk, and again, take a deep breath. And those of us as parents, the birth of our children and the importance of breathing through that birth process. Basically, if you've lived on this planet, you have had to learn how to take a deep breath once in a while, right? A nice deep breath brings more oxygen into our bodies, through our lungs, into our bloodstream, bringing life to our organs, including one of our most precious organs, our brain, right? When we breathe in good, clean air, when we take a deep breath, it helps us to relax. It eases our anxieties, calms our worries, helps our body, our mind, and our spirit to be at ease. Breathing is more than just flushing out carbon dioxide with out-breaths and bringing in oxygen with every inhale. It allows us to pause, to calm ourselves. We use breathing in meditation. We use it in centering prayer and in other spiritual disciplines to calm ourselves as we sit in the presence of God, the presence of the divine who is the breath of life and who gives us the breath of life. We have all gone over a year in which breath and breathing has had its limitations and restrictions. We have experienced and continue to experience mask mandates and business closures, no in-person worship, no singing, which requires a lot of deep breaths to hold those longer notes. We've also remembered those who lost their breath of life over the past year and counting. Ventilators that breathe into people to keep them alive and give them a chance at survival. About a year ago, there was George Floyd who couldn't breathe because of Derek Chauvin's knee pressing on his airways. Or Breonna Taylor who lost her breath of life past couple weeks, we've heard stories from Palestinian children in the West Bank and Gaza who are suffocating in the dust and ash of buildings destroyed by guided missiles and misguided men, to quote Dr. King. The breath of life is precious. Breath is sacred and purposeful. This morning, we have a few Bible stories that tell about God's life-giving and life-sustaining breath. The first story comes from our alternative first lesson for the day. It is the story of Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones. And the Hebrew word ruach means spirit, wind, or breath. And notice that it is the spirit or the breath of the Lord that brings Ezekiel out. It teleports him to a place and sits him down in this valley of dry bones. And God commands Ezekiel to speak to the bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and ca will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. The 
first thing is the breath of God. See, this is a story about how God was going to breathe life into a people who had been utterly defeated. Previously, the rulers of Judah had treated their own people harshly. They had neglected the widows, the orphans, and the strangers, the foreigners in their midst. Instead of caring for the vulnerable, the rulers and the powerful ended up taking care of themselves. And because of this, they were summarily destroyed by the Babylonians. Their leaders were carried off into exile in Babylon, while a remnant was left behind in the ashes and the ruins. Ezekiel was a Jerusalem priest who was among those carried away into captivity. He was called to be a prophet to the people in exile. He, along with the others, sat by the rivers of Babylon, and there they wept when they remembered Zion. They remembered the destruction of Jerusalem and their kingdom. And it is in our lesson today that the Lord God was showing Ezekiel a sign of hope and restoration that was to come after their time of captivity, after their exile. And maybe they would learn from their past mistakes, follow the way of the Lord, and be led by the Spirit of the Lord, led by the breath of God. Our gospel reading and our reading from Acts also tell of a, a time of transition of hope and of restoration during a time of great fear and anxiety. In the gospel, Jesus promises to send an advocate, a helper, the spirit of truth to guide his followers. And Jesus says to them, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And that spirit of truth came on Pentecost. Pentecost was a festival that the Hebrew people celebrated seven weeks after the Passover. It marked the time after God's deliverance and saving work, the liberation of the Israelites from captivity and bondage in Egypt and into freedom. For God saw the people in their suffering. God heard the cries of those who called out for justice. God answers, God saves, God restores, God sends God's spirit to bring forth justice to those who cry out. And Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the advocate, to wait for the spirit of truth. And they did as they were told. It had only been seven weeks since Jesus was executed and raised from the dead and laid in a valley of dry bones himself. And the apostles were still a bit apprehensive when it came to going out for fear of what the authorities might do to them. So they were again locked up in a room in a house waiting for God to act just as Jesus had promised. And the scripture tells us, when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, and the Spirit gave them ability. A violent wind, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit filled the space that they were in. It caused such a commotion that a crowd of people rushed to see and hear what was happening. The spirit of the Lord, the breath of God filled the apostles, and it was both drawing in the world as it was forcing the apostles out into the world to engage the world. The people who gathered were able to hear the apostles speaking in their own language and they could understand them. They were a bit confused and some of them thought that the apostles were drunk, right? But it was the spirit of the Lord, the breath of God that was leading them and guiding them to proclaim a message of salvation a message of restoration, a message of hope 
during a time of great fear and anxiety and transition. They were being led to proclaim a message of God's saving grace, never ending hope and a steadfast love for the sake of the world. I think many of us have felt like we've been in the valley of dry bones for over the past year. Or many of us may feel like we've been locked up in a room somewhere just waiting for an advocate, a helper, a spirit of truth to come and set us free that we might be able to take a deep breath again. Maybe we can be restored to some state of normalcy, whatever that might be. We want to live and breathe again like we did before the pandemic, free of masks, free of fear, free of restrictions and guidelines. And we're almost there, but not quite yet. The apostles in our Acts lesson were almost there as well. They got their fill of the Holy Spirit, but Pentecost is just the beginning of the establishment of Christ Church in and for the sake of the world. They still needed to receive their instructions from the Spirit. They didn't yet have their protocols or know what they were to do next. Over the course of the next dozen or so chapters in the book of Acts, they will have to figure out how the Spirit will lead them in reaching out to the Gentiles. They will need to discern where they will be called to proclaim the gospel message. And they will need to figure out what they're going to do with this guy named Saul from Tarsus, right? Figure out what they're going to do with this Paul who's been persecuting the church. There's a lot of things for this early group of followers of Jesus, these apostles, to figure out where the Spirit is going to lead them and take them. There's a lot of uncertainty, fear, doubt, and struggle ahead for the followers of the way of Jesus. But on Pentecost, they're invited by the Spirit to take a deep breath of God's living spirit of grace and truth. They're invited to be restored and renewed by the Spirit for their journey of faith, hope, and love. And they will face many challenges and struggles along their way. But it is the spirit that calls them to follow that way, the way of Jesus. So this Pentecost, I invite us to take in some deep breaths of God's spirit of truth and of grace. I invite us to do so safely in spaces that call, God calls us to be in. As we begin to transition from a time of great anxiety and fear to a time of great hope and renewal in our church and in our lives. I invite families as you gather around the dinner table before you pray, before you bless your meal, in times as families together, I invite you to just pause and breathe and give thanks for the breath of life. Give thanks to God for the breath of life and the opportunities that God has given us, that God has called us into being his disciples in and for the sake of the world. As we go for walks outdoors or in our backyards or at parks, just take a deep breath of some good fresh air. Feel the wind blowing and invite the Spirit of God, the breath of God, to lead you and guide you, to lead us, to guide us through this time of transition, out of fear and anxiety, and into a time of hope and renewal and God's love. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today is Pentecost, the 50th day of Easter, and we ask God to send the Holy Spirit on the church, the earth, and all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, Come, Holy Spirit. God of life, we pray for the church around the globe. For the church in Africa, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. For the church in Asia, we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. For the church in Australia and all the islands, we pray, come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the church in Europe, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For the church in North and Central and South America, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. For our congregation, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And for all who search for you, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bless the lands, the seas, and all your creatures too numerous to count. Send your lively spirit to renew the face of the whole earth. For the earth we pray, come Holy Spirit. Inspire the leaders of nations to strive for justice and equality for all. Bring peace to Jerusalem, to Israel, and to Palestine. Provide a home for refugees. For the nations of the world we pray, Come, Holy Spirit. Instill in our legislators and judges a passion for truth. Grant your spirit to all who make political decisions in our land that they discern and walk the way of righteousness. For our government, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. Unite all peoples around the globe into one human kind of cooperation and care. Teach us to respect Teach us respect for those whose language or skin color or culture is different from our own. For the end of prejudice, we pray, come, come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bring an end to the pandemic. Restore those who have contracted the virus. Uphold healthcare workers and supply vaccines to all countries and all peoples. For worldwide health, we pray, come, come Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Visit all who are suffering, all who feel hopeless, and all who face death. Feed all who hunger. Grant jobs to those who are unemployed. Send healing to those who's who we named here before you. For all those who are in need, we pray. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Breathe your life into each of us and receive the cries of our own hearts. For ourselves, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Receive our praise for all the faithful who have gone before us, from the first Pentecost, throughout Christian history, and up to this week, that at the end we join with all the saints to rejoice in your presence, we pray, come, Holy Spirit. With confidence in your love and trust in your mercy, glorious Lord, giver of life, we offer these pray prayers through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace with our neighbors.
You could see the smiles through the masks. <laughs> This time, I think we have our offering song. Loving God, you know the needs of all the world. By your spirit, grant that we, having turned to you in prayer, now might turn to one another in peace. Tend and keep what you have made, and love our neighbor with the love of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Before we do the blessing, there's a, a few announcements that we'll need to uh, go over. Uh, probably first and foremost uh, is indoor uh, in sanctuary worship updates. Uh, I know a lot of us are anxious to, to get back into more familiar surroundings, amen? Um, we're right now as uh, the council and worship committee uh, looking to put some protocols in place. Uh, good news is a lot of people are vaccinated Unfortunately, a lot of our young people cannot get vaccinated yet. So there are certain things that we'll have to make sure that we have in place for uh, those who haven't been able to receive vaccines uh, and those who are maybe immunocompromised. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we have all of our T's crossed, our I's dotted. I got that right, I usually get it backwards. Um, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, 
But we want to make sure that we have all that in place and that we have clear guidelines for everyone as we return to worship. A lot of it includes which way to enter, which way to exit, what bathrooms are usable, uh, a lot of things that sometimes we don't always have uh, in place, but make sure we have that all in place so we can safely worship indoors together. And the timetable we're talking about is just a few weeks, so please uh, be patient, continue to be patient. Uh, I know it's been a long time coming, um, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. Um, and so uh, just ask for a little bit more patience as as uh, we get to, to that point. Um, there are uh, portals of prayer that are available. Uh, new uh, booklets are out and available. So if you want them, I think they're back here. So on your way out, you can grab some, uh, grab a few, share them with neighbors, family, friends, total strangers. <laughs> Wonderful evangelism tools, right? Uh, Synod Assembly is coming up, and we do have some Synod Assembly participants. We have our, our Synod, Synod, yeah, there's our Synod Assembly voting members back there. Super excited, yay. Uh, I think we have six of us that are, are voting members here at Our Saviors, uh, so that'll be coming up, not this weekend, because this weekend is a holiday weekend, right? Memorial weekend? Um, but then the following weekend is our, our Synod Assembly. Uh, today is a very special day. It is Pentecost, but it also is the day that marks the 56th anniversary of our wonderful organ here at Our Saviors that was installed May 23rd. Yeah. May 23rd, 1965, uh, refurbished nearly 25 years ago uh, with a new chance console uh, that Patty says is a dream to play, right? Oh, yeah. um, and uh, to mark this event, uh, we're going to do something a little special. So remember how in the gospel, or not in the gospel, but in the Acts lesson, the Holy Spirit came in like a rush of wind and all these people were causing all this commotion from the outside and other things. Well, we're going to be filled with the, the Holy Spirit as well. And Patty is going to play a wonderful Takata by Charles... Marie Vidor, with a W, but it's pronounced with a V. Okay, got it. Um, uh, one of her, her favorite uh, pieces to play for Easter, and it's fiery, right? Because today is the day that we're celebrating the spirit and fire and a passion uh, for proclaiming the gospel, right? So we're going to do a, a recessional, and we're going to take it out to the streets uh, and to let people know that we are here. Okay, and as we do that, we'll be able to hear this wonderful fiery uh, piece that, that Patty is going to play on the organ, uh, nice and loud for the whole neighborhood to hear and for us to hear and enjoy. Amen? Amen. All right. So that'll, that'll be coming up after we do the blessing uh, dismissal. And I'll ask uh, Jonathan, who will be my helper, uh, who will lead us uh, with the processional cross. Put those down. He didn't know he was getting put to work today. Okay. So please receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Thank you.